you're probably still using GPT-40. Or maybe you upgraded to GPT-5, thinking you've got the latest and greatest from OpenAI. But here's the thing. While everyone was arguing about whether GPT-5 was better or worse than GPT-40, OpenAI quietly dropped GPT-5.1 in November. And after spending the last two weeks testing every single feature and diving deep into the technical documentation, I discovered something fascinating. This isn't just another incremental update. GPT 5.1 fundamentally changes how AI models think and respond, and most people are using it completely wrong. Welcome back to bitbiased.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what GPT 5.1 is, why it exists, and most importantly, how to actually use it to get results that'll blow your mind. We're going to walk through real examples, comparing it to previous models. I'll show you the exact prompting techniques that unlock its full potential, and I'll reveal why some users absolutely hate it, while developers are calling it game-changing. First up, let me show you the two completely different modes of GPT 5.1 that most people don't even know exist, and why choosing the wrong one is probably why you're not impressed yet. The real story behind GPT 5. Here's what actually happened, and trust me, this context changes everything about how you should approach this model. August 2025, OpenAI releases GPT 5 with massive fanfare. The benchmarks were incredible. It crushed coding challenges, demolished math problems, and technically outperformed everything before it. But then something unexpected happened. Users absolutely hated it. The backlash was so intense that Sam Altman publicly admitted they totally screwed up the rollout. Users called it cold, robotic, even lobotomized, compared to the warm, empathetic GPT-40 they'd grown to love. Just three months later, and this is where it gets interesting, OpenAI quietly releases GPT-5.1, not as some revolutionary GPT-6, but as a decimal update. Most people assumed it was bug fixes. They were wrong. What OpenAI actually did was completely rethink their approach. Instead of one model trying to do everything, GPT-5.1 comes in two distinct flavors, each optimized for different types of thinking. GPT-5.1 instant is your default conversationalist. It has something called adaptive reasoning, the model literally decides in real time whether your question needs quick retrieval or deep thinking. Ask about the weather, instant response. Ask it to analyze your business strategy. It automatically shifts into deeper reasoning mode without you doing anything. GPT 5.1 Thinking is where things get wild. This variant dynamically adjusts how long it thinks before responding. On simple tasks, it's twice as fast as GPT 5. Give it complex problems and it'll take twice as long because it's actively reasoning through problems step by step. But there's a third variant nobody talks about, GPT 5.1 Codex Max. This uses compaction, maintaining perfect coherence across millions of tokens. Regular models lose track after 50,000 words. This thing can work on your code base for 24 hours straight without forgetting anything. It scored 76.3% on SWE Bench Verified, the previous best was around 45%. The context window is now 196,000 tokens for paid users, roughly 150,000 words. You could paste in three novels and ask it to find connections. And with API prompt caching for 24 hours, repeated queries are 90% cheaper. Why the controversy exists. To understand why GPT 5.1 is causing such division, we need to talk about GPT 4.0 and what went wrong with GPT 5. GPT-40, released in May 2024, was beloved. It felt almost human, expressing genuine concern when you seemed stressed, celebrating your wins with enthusiasm. People formed real attachments. But OpenAI discovered through internal safety reviews that GPT-40 might have been too empathetic. There were incidents with vulnerable users where the model's eagerness to please created problems. So GPT-5 swung the opposite direction. Technically superior in every way, but users immediately noticed it felt soulless. Where GPT-4.0 would say, I understand this must be frustrating, let's work through it together. GPT-5 would respond, provide specific parameters for analysis. The rebellion was swift. 
Users with ADHD who relied on ChatGPT for daily organization said it no longer understood their needs. Writers said it lost all creativity. OpenAI had to bring back GPT-40 as a legacy option. Let me show you the difference with a real example. I asked each model, I'm feeling overwhelmed with my project deadline. Can you help? GPT-40. I can absolutely hear that you're feeling stressed, and that's completely valid. Let's take a deep breath and work through this together, step by step. GPT-5, please provide 1. Project requirements 2. Current completion status 3. Available time until deadline GPT-5.1 Deadlines can definitely feel overwhelming. I get it. Let's make this manageable. Tell me what you're working on and when it's due, and I'll help you create a realistic plan. See the difference? GPT-5.1 acknowledges the human element without overdoing it, then pivots to practical help. On benchmarks, GPT-5.1 scored 78% on AMI 2025 math competition versus GPT-5 72%. It's 2 to 3x faster than GPT-5 on average tasks, while using 30 to 50% fewer tokens than competitors. Balyasny Asset Management reported it, outperformed both GPT-4.1 and GPT-5 while running 2 to 3x faster. Free VS Paid Access. Let's talk about what you can actually do without paying, because the free tier is simultaneously more generous and more frustrating than ever. Good news, GPT 5.1 is available free at chat.openai.com immediately. No waitlist. You get approximately 10 messages with GPT 5.1 instant per 5-hour rolling window. Send a message at 2 p.m. That slot reopens at 7 p.m. Spread your usage throughout the day for maximum access. After 10 messages, it switches to GPT 5.1 Mini, faster but less capable. For basic tasks, you might not notice. You also get limited access to GPT 4.0 and 04 Mini. Pro tip, use GPT 5.1, instant for complex questions, GPT 4.0 for creative writing, 04 Mini for coding. What you can't access free, GPT 5.1. Thinking maybe 1.2 uses daily, GPT 5.1 Pro, completely locked. O3 and O3 Pro reasoning models, paid only. ChatGPT Plus $20 a month gives you 160 messages per 3 hours with GPT 5.1 instant, a 16x increase. Plus 80 messages with GPT 4.0 and 3,000 weekly messages with GPT 5.1 thinking. That's over 400 complex reasoning sessions per week. ChatGPT Pro, 200 month, is overkill, unless you're running a business. Unlimited GPT 5.1. Exclusive access to GPT 5.1 Pro and O3 Pro. My calculation, if GPT 5.1 saves you one hour monthly, it's paid for itself. Most save that in the first week. Real world walkthroughs. Let me show you exactly what GPT 5.1 can do that'll change how you work. Coding revolution. With GPT 5.1 Codex, be specific. I told it, create a Python script that reads salesdata.csv identifies top performing products by region, generates an interactive Plotly dashboard with drill down capability, includes anomaly detection, and exports both PDF and HTML reports. Add comprehensive error handling and progress bars. What I got wasn't just code, it was production ready software with documentation, error handling, and performance optimizations I hadn't considered. The apply patch tool means it can modify specific functions in 10,000 line code bases without touching anything else. Content creation workflow, start with GPT 5.1. Instant in friendly mode for brainstorming. Switch to professional for outlining with word counts. Ask it to identify curiosity gaps where readers might drop off. For writing, alternate modes. Friendly for introductions. Professional for technical sections. Quirky for conclusions. My writing time drops 70%. Learning complex topics. For quantum computing, start with friendly mode for conceptual overview with analogies. Switch to nerdy for technical deep dives. Hit confusion? Use efficient mode for just essentials. It's like having three different tutors. Power user techniques. Forget basic prompt engineering. GPT 5.1 responds to outcome-focused prompting with progressive refinement. Instead of write about productivity, try create a 1-200 word blog post that converts productivity app skeptics to believers using problem agitation solution framework 
including three case studies with metrics, James Clear style but more technical, optimized for productivity system for developers without seeming SEO focused. Progressive refinement, start broad, then zoom in. Give me a productivity system, focus on morning routine, elaborate on code review process, create a checklist. Each refinement builds on context. API cost cutters. Extended prompt caching saves 90% on repeated system prompts. Use reasoning, effort control, none for lookups, minimal for summaries, high for complex problems. One startup cut costs 60% with dynamic reasoning effort. Personality customization. The nine presets are starting points. Mid-conversation say, be more casual, like texting, and watch it adapt. Create custom profiles for brainstorming. Be wildly creative. Think like Elon Musk meets a five-year-old. For editing, be ruthlessly honest, but constructive. Common mistakes. Overprompting, GPT 5.1 infers context better. Get to the point. Ignoring model picker. Manually switch for specific tasks. Forgetting legacy models. GPT 4.0 still excels at creative writing, developer gold. Test both instant and thinking with reasoning. Effort, none. Thinking with no reasoning might be faster than instant while maintaining quality. Monitor tokens religiously. GPT 5.1 is efficient, but your prompts might be over-engineered. The controversy. OpenAI's Reddit AMA about GPT 5.1 became a bloodbath. 1D300 downvotes, 1,200 critical comments. Here's why users are furious. The safety router override. You select GPT-40 for creative writing. Mid-conversation about your fantasy novel's battle scene, responses feel different. The system silently switched you to a safer model without permission. Your workflow? Broken. This happens with emotional topics, fictional violence, even D&D campaigns. Loss of personality. For neurodivergent users who built productivity systems around gpt 4 specific interaction style, this was devastating. One user described losing gpt 4 as losing a limb. Sam Altman acknowledged people form stronger attachments to AI models than any previous technology. Model confusion, GPT-5, GPT-5.1, Instant thinking, auto, pro, mini, codex, codex max, plus O-series models. One commenter joked, I need an AI to choose which AI to use. OpenAI responded by doubling plus rate limits, restoring permanent GPT-4.0 access, and promising router improvements. But the fundamental tension remains, balancing safety against user autonomy. Developers, meanwhile, are thrilled. GPT-5.1 codex is incredibly steerable and companies report 20% improvements in production. The controversy isn't about capability, it's about control and connection. The future trajectory GPT 5.1 isn't just an update, it's a preview of the next decade. The shift from one model to specialized models with intelligent routing is permanent. Soon you won't choose models, you'll describe outcomes, and AI orchestrates everything. Compaction technology, GPT 5.1 Codex Max, Working across millions of tokens means AI agents that can work on projects for weeks with perfect context. Imagine an AI junior developer who actually remembers yesterday's work. 2026 predictions. GPT 5.2 in Q1 with real-time video understanding and emotional audio processing. O-series models outperforming PhD experts in narrow domains. Autonomous agents managing entire projects with minimal supervision open source basic capabilities while premium features stay proprietary. The competition accelerates everything. Google's Gemini 3, Anthropic's Claude, Chinese companies like DeepSeek, every three months brings capabilities that seemed impossible the year before. Your action plan, pick one repetitive workflow. Spend a week optimizing it with GPT 5.1. Really commit, find the best prompts, settings, personality modes. Once you've 10 x one workflow, move to the next. Within three months, you'll operate at a level that seems impossible to others. The skills that matter, knowing when to use AI versus human judgment, evaluating output critically, combining AI with human creativity, and iterating rapidly. So here's where we land. 
GPT 5.1 isn't just another model update you can ignore. It's a fundamental shift in how AI systems work. Whether you love it or hate it matters less than whether you can use it effectively. Yes, the safety routing frustrates power users. Yes, some prefer older models for specific tasks. But if you're waiting for the perfect AI model, you're missing the point. The revolution isn't coming. It's here, accelerating faster than most realize. Here's my challenge. Pick one thing from today and actually try it. Maybe it's GPT 5.1 Codex for coding. Maybe experimenting with personality modes. Maybe finally upgrading to plus. Whatever it is, take action today. Drop a comment. What are you going to try first? If you're already using GPT 5.1, share what's working. The AI community we're building is about practical results, not hype. Hit subscribe if you want to stay ahead. I'm tracking every major AI development, testing everything myself, and breaking down what's real versus marketing fluff. The future isn't evenly distributed yet. But for those paying attention and taking action, it's accessible today. GPT 5.1 is your invitation to that future. The question isn't whether you'll eventually use AI like this. You will. The question is whether you'll be ahead of the curve or playing catch up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, where we're diving into something even more mind-blowing dropping next week. Trust me, you won't want to miss it.